Hey there, my friends. Greetings. This is Carrie Kanya. Thank you so much for joining me today as we take a look at the energy shaping up around this week's full moon happening in the sign of Aquarius on August 11th. We're going to be taking a look at the energies from August 11th through the 17th. Let's go ahead and dive in. Welcome back, friends. So yeah, we continue to have some pretty intense energies going on. These energies really are sort of no joke, bringing a sense of tension. But what we're going to do is take a look at how we can best utilize these energies to support our journeys in expansion. We do have the full moon happening at 19 degrees Aquarius. So one thing that you could do is take a look at your own natal chart if you have it and look to see if you have anything going on on any planets, celestial bodies, or points in the degrees ranging from about 17 degrees Aquarius till we can say 22 degrees Aquarius. If you have planets, points, celestial bodies, happening in that aspect of your chart chances are you're going to be feeling a little bit more than people that don't have things going on in that aspect of their chart however the energies are so intense right now that we're for sure all feeling it astrologically speaking the full moon happening in the sign of aquarius is opposing the sun in Leo. So every full moon, there's an opposition between the moon and the sun. And so it gives us a little bit of an awareness of where there can be a highlighted focus in our life. The sun in Leo, as we've been talking about over the past few weeks, as we've been in Leo season, brings us into an energy of being in our exuberance, being in our creative self-expression, really embracing our individuality, our uniqueness, and being really dedicated to that. The moon in Aquarius can bring innovative insights intuitively, especially based on things that are connected to what your emotional needs are right now. And this is all tied into this bigger picture of what's been unfolding with this Uranus North Node conjunction that we still are being influenced by right now. But the main thing that I'm getting here is that this full moon in Aquarius is conjunct or aligned with the planet Saturn, which is also in Aquarius. Saturn is the planet that governs things having to do with government, responsibility. It can also be karma. It can be guidelines, rules, regulations, things having to do with timing, generational situations. But what I'm really tuning into with this whole configuration of what's going on astrologically this week, I feel that this full moon conjunct Saturn is really about us stepping fully into our self-responsibility. Self-responsibility feels like a really good description of how to work with the energy that's going on. The nature of the energy that's going on astrologically this week can be really likened to the archetype of the tower card in the tarot, meaning that we are all having an experience of the foundations of our reality being somewhat shaken up. And so it's important to remember that when this type of energy shows up in our lives, that on one level, this is divine intelligence, cosmic consciousness, however you wanna call it, God, spirit, universe, really, supporting us in being liberated from anything that has become an energetic density, anything that has become a source of stagnation in our life. It's being liberated from things that are no longer aligned with us so that we can rise into a more optimized flow and fulfillment in our lives. Some of us might be experiencing a personal crisis around what we desire, what we want, and the reality of what's going on. Where this Saturn full moon conjunction comes in, 
especially in Aquarius, because Aquarius is about the bigger picture. It's about the future. It's about the greater good for humanity. It's about the collective, especially those of us who are evolutionary souls, meaning you are a person who has an innate sense of dedication to your own soul evolution. You have an innate sense of dedication to supporting the soul evolution in humanity, which I know a lot of us here on this channel are evolutionary souls. For us, it's not only about our personal dedication or responsibility to ourself for our own growth, but it's also the awareness of how that's impacting the collective. For instance, we have to remember that everything that we choose consciously or unconsciously is influencing the collective unconscious of humanity. For those of us who are evolutionary souls, one thing that might inspire us to really rise into embodying the courage, the strength, that might be needed in order for you to make the changes that are necessary based on what your sense of self-responsibility is to yourself and your own growth is to also consider how this is impacting humanity. Like, okay, well, if I don't do this, what are the ramifications of that in regard to how I'm supporting the awakening of consciousness within humanity? Are the choices that I'm making supporting that in myself and in humanity or not. And so I just want to throw that out there because that's definitely a part of the themes that are connected to Aquarius, allowing that sense of remembrance around your contribution to the collective feels like it's an energy that can inspire us or give us that little boost of fervor that we might need to take whatever type of plunge you're being guided to take in your life right now. The the moon, Saturn, the sun are all also in a square. This could be considered a T-square, a big square with this Uranus uh, North Node conjunction. And I'll also say that if we factor in the South Node, which is in the opposite sign of Scorpio right now, then that puts the south node also squaring the moon, the sun, and opposite the Uranus north node. And so that brings us into what's called a grand square or a grand cross, which is a tension-oriented aspect. This definitely is like a week of some tense energies but again, we have to realize that the tension that we're experiencing, if you feel like you're in some type of pressure cooker, it's meant to get our attention looking, considering in the direction of how we can alleviate ourselves from where there has been those patterns of stagnation, misalignment, density, things that don't feel aligned or flowing so that we can leap into that higher timeline, which is what this Uranus North Node conjunction has been all about over the past few weeks. Now we also have Pluto in the sign of Capricorn making a trine aspect to Uranus in the North Node. Pluto being about transformation, feels like this next few weeks as we're moving from the full moon and the two weeks leading up to the next new moon, I expect that this can be a time where energy can be flowing in the way of releasing, letting go, bringing things into completion that need to be brought into completion as a part of a new energy momentum that's building. Anytime we have these types of tension-oriented energies showing up astrologically, I like to take a look at what is the best way to navigate through these energies in the most conscious ways. One thing that keeps coming to my awareness when I'm looking at the energies this week is a term that is sometimes used in Toltec wisdom, shamanic 
spirituality. And it's the idea of living in ghost town. And what that means is we're feeling stuck, whether it's emotionally, mentally, literally, physically, or even on spiritual levels, we feel stuck in a dream that has not come into fruition. We feel stuck in the realization that something that was important to us is no longer flourishing in alignment with the growth of our own life. And so it's important to face that and allow ourselves to be present with the reality of the here and now and allow our decisions to be soul-centered decisions that are connected to the reality of the here and now energy rather than how we wish things could be. Making choices based on the actual reality of now is definitely gonna be what opens up a pathway forward for new beginnings for all of us. A couple more things I wanna mention here before we look into the cards. I'm noticing that we do have Venus now in the sign of Leo. When Venus is in Leo, it does lend itself to a feeling of refreshment, exuberance. Venus in Leo is an aspect that inspires us to shift up into feeling good, to tend to our self-care, do things that are acts of self-love, self-nurturing, again, things that make us feel good is one pathway forward through this energy. And I'm noticing that this Venus in Leo is making a trine aspect to Jupiter, which is retrograde now, and somewhat aligning with Chiron, which is about healing. So the good thing is, is that healing energies can come from these tensions that we're experiencing now especially when we're deliberately, consciously efforting in the direction of our self-love and our self-care. Now, when I look at the predominance of element theme happening this week, we do have a predominance of Earth energy where we have Pluto, Mars, Uranus, the North Node, and Mercury all in Earth signs. There's still a little bit of a fire emphasis as well with Jupiter, Chiron, the Sun, and Venus being in fire signs. The Earth element emphasis that I'm seeing here brings my attention to self-love, self-care in ways that are very physical. Any type of fitness routine, eating healthy, uh, enjoying pleasures of the senses, physically speaking, thinking of what am I tasting, touching, smelling, tasting, experiencing. So that's the best way to work with these energies now. The other thing that I'll say, with these tension energies, basically the tensions are bringing into focus what doesn't feel aligned, what doesn't feel good, what doesn't feel balanced or in a flow, and so on a practical level, paying attention to the awarenesses that you have within yourself along those lines and asking yourself, what would feel better? I'm noticing what doesn't feel good, but what would feel good? And how can I pivot my focus, my intent, my energy, my decisions, my choices, and my actions along the lines of what feels better? This is a really good time to just move forward consciously. I mean, it's always a good time in life to move forward consciously, right? But especially when we're in the throes of tension-oriented energy that we've got going on right now, instead of getting sucked into what might be triggers coming up, working through those triggers consciously, looking at them in the way of what is this showing me or telling me about what my inner truth is, what I really need, what I really prefer. 
So with that, I'm going to do a simple, short tarot reading today connected to the full moon energy. And I'm working with my Osho Zen Tarot deck today. I like working with this deck, especially when I'm seeking deep, esoteric, soul-centered insight and guidance. And I feel like we can all use that this week. So the three cards that I'm going to be looking at are connected to what's being illuminated with this full moon, what's coming into our awareness that we can no longer deny, so to speak, what wants to be released, what wants to be expressed, what wants to be let go or purged, and what's the nature of the transformation that's coming in with this full moon week with ahead with this energy and so i'm going to go ahead and select some cards here we're going to look at what's being illuminated what is being illuminated it's the card that's called patience and when we look at this card we can see that there's a woman that's pregnant the word is patience. It's assigned to the number seven. And you can see above her head are the different phases of the moon. This is being very clear on what your intent is, what your objectives are, and holding space consciously, deliberately with those things in mind. What do you associate or what do you imagine your your vibrational frequency and state of being would be if the things that you're efforting towards now have already manifested? And whatever that is, allow that actual tangible feeling of that to rise up within you and hold that energy space as your baseline vibration or frequency, that's going to greatly enhance or assist the manifestation processes. It's assisting or enhancing the ability for a full return or manifestation of whatever those things are for you when you're being a beacon of that energy space yourself. The teaching here is that it takes time for the moon to grow full. No matter how much I wish that it didn't take 28 days for the moon to complete a cycle, it's gonna take 28 days for that moon to complete a cycle. No matter how much I intend for that to be different or I wish for that to be different, there's cosmic cycles and seasons of life that we just have to trust and be in a flow with and allow. We might feel like in some ways that we are in a rush for whatever we're intending to hurry up and manifest. But at the same time, if it's not manifesting, we have to trust there's a reason for that and that things are still calibrating. Just because something hasn't completely manifested or shown up yet doesn't mean that it's not going to. It just means that the timing is not now. So having your clear intent, having your clear awareness, vision, dream, and the intent to walk into that in conscious co-creating with spirit, which this can also look like, you know, asking for signs from the universe and then following those signs. Really staying tuned in on those higher levels of cosmic awareness and consciousness right now is the the wisdom of that is what's being illuminated in our awareness right now okay so let's take a look at what's being released what's being released what's being let go of what's being brought to completion expressed healed it's the compromise card and it's showing up reversed here's what the card looks like right side up two people who are linked together and they're neither one of them are completely happy but neither one of them are willing to make a change and so there becomes this unconscious hooked into uh, less than fulfilling dynamics in her life. This could have to do with actual relationships in your life with people, whether it's romantic, friend, family, coworker, whatever, 
or it could be a situation that is bringing a feeling of compromise. It could be your job. It could be whatever. But ask yourself, where do I feel like I've been hooked into an unfulfilling pattern of compromise? And how can I shift that? How can I release that? How can I transmute that? How can I alchemize that? It starts with intent. You might not know the details of how it's going to happen, but if you have the intent and the intent begins with the recognition, I recognize where I'm stuck in a pattern of compromise that does not feel fulfilling. My intent is to shift out of that. And I'm asking spirit, God, universe, cosmic consciousness for guidance along the way. And I'm being vigilantly aware of the signs and I'm dedicated to following the signs and doing my part in doing what I need to do to make decisions or choices or take actions that's going to make that shift. And then the last card we're going to look at today is where's the transformation? What's coming up for us as far as a message about transformation? Perfect. The card is called Understanding. And when we see the card, there's a bird who seems to be trying to be freed from a cage that's restricting its freedom so that it can be flying out and about with the other birds. When I'm looking at this card, especially with the keyword understanding and what we're looking at of what's transforming, this bird is so frantically trying to get out of this cage and its its wings are preventing it here from fully being able to get out. But if you look, there's no bar right in front. And so it's like if the bird could calm down and not be frantically flapping its wings to try to get out, if it could just let its wings be just folded in at its side, it could easily just hop right out of that cage. So I feel like the understanding part is understanding what your part has been, what has been your part in unintentionally keeping yourself stuck. And the transformation lies within making a different choice, taking a different perspective, taking a different approach, shifting into a different energy, that old analogy that something along the lines of you can't find a solution from the same mindset that created the problem is coming in, right? So we have to shift our focus, our perception, our point of view, our energy, our energetic state of being. If we can shift to choosing high vibrational ways, conscious ways of moving through things, rather than fear-oriented ways. This is how positive transformation can happen. This next few months is um, an empowering time of transformation. And the best thing we can do through this now is just riding the wave of staying connected to higher guidance, staying really connected with your higher self, your own inner guidance, but in ways where you're really grounded in it, you're, you're grounded in this realm with it in order to like manifest tangible results. So that could also look just like follow through, right? So I know what I need to do and I'm taking those steps in the best way that I can. Not, I know what I need to do, but I'm not making steps. Just having the intention and the dedication, this is the path that I'm choosing. My intention is to step onto this path. I'm not wavering. I'm not caving. I'm not giving in or falling into a slumber. I'm just holding space and allowing myself to be guided. So that's what's going on this week. I know it's intense. Share with me in the comments below anything that you want to share uh, about what your experience with this energy is or any questions that you might want to ask and I'm happy to reply to them. Thank you so much for your presence here. If you love my content here on this channel, I appreciate you giving it a like, a thumbs up. That lets YouTube know that you love my content and it helps spread the word about what I'm doing here. Thank you so much for subscribing guys all my love blessings namaste and of course as usual i will see you around the corner in the next video all my love